Jones always gets her personal, amen, seat. That's all right, amen. amen. On this uh, Consecration Sunday, we have been talking about our journey to generosity. As generosity is the destination or the point that we want to arrive. And now, as we, as we studied, as we you know, talked about this journey to generosity, we, we talked about the image of God and what it means to be made in the image of God. We know God as the supreme giver, the best giver that has ever existed. And there are a lot of ways in which we can be made in God's image and appear in God's image. But one way that we surely can appear in God's image is to give, to bless, to be generous, to help others, to, to make a commitment to be faithful in our giving. That's one way in which we can reflect the image of God. I don't know about you, but I don't know God to be a stingy giver. I don't know God to be a, an unfaithful giver. I don't know God to be a conditional giver. You know, God doesn't say, well, I'll wake you up if you, as long as you make me happy. Amen. So, <laughs> As long as things go my way, I'll put food on your table. I, I've never found that to be God's M.O. And so we, as those who dare to try to reflect God's image, ought to be the type of givers that God has demonstrated God's self to be. You know, when I think about giving in the context of the church, I, re I realized that not only does it begin with faith, but it ends with faith as well. And faith is a part of our giving all the way through. It has to begin with faith, knowing that all that we have comes from above. And it ends with faith knowing that if we give, that if we give with an open hand, that the same God who gave it in the first place is capable and willing to give us more. Amen? Amen. And so this morning we have a story about a woman who was the wife of one of the prophets. And her husband had died and her and his debtors were coming to take her son and enslave him as would have been the Hebrew law. You know, Hebrew law allowed the widow's creditor to claim her sons as payments for these debts. If her sons would have been enslaved, then this widow would have had no way to support herself. She was in the midst of a crisis. Amen. Giving begins with faith. And faith is a part of giving all the way through. But you know, faith has another component. You know, faith is believing, but faith is also moving in a way, in a, in a direction that Let's us know that, let's God know that we trust, that we have belief, that we can rely on one that is greater than ourselves. Uh, in other words, uh, our faith has to have some action attached to it. I wish I had a witness this morning. You know, we can say that we believe just about anything, Brother Graham, but there comes a time when we have to show or we have to demonstrate what it is we profess to Amen. believe. Right. 
And so on this Consecration Sunday, we, we are being called to demonstrate our faith, to commit to saying, God, I know what you have blessed me with, and I know that uh, I'm committed to this ministry, I'm committed to you through this this faith community, and I'm going to commit for uh, 2019 uh, a reasonable portion, a faithful portion of, of the blessings that you have given to me. This is a time where we show our faith. We don't just talk about our faith, but we show our faith. This widow was in the midst of a crisis saying, the creditor is coming to take my two children as slaves. So she went to the prophet. She went to the man of God and said, can you help me? And in verse 2, the scripture says, Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? You know, faith is a funny thing. You know, we have it in abundant supply until the very moment that we need it. I wish I had a witness this morning. You know, we're faithful, faithful. We sing the songs. We, uh, we, we, we send out messages on Instagram and Facebook about how faithful we are and how we believe God. But in the moment of crisis, the question becomes, where is your faith? I don't want you to look at anyone. Uh, maybe you ought to just look in the mirror. But uh, when uh, life uh, stares you in the face, when you are facing your darkest, most difficult moments, where is your faith? Can your faith uh, be shown in how you live, how you act, how you behave? Uh, where is your faith? Can uh, in someone uh, from the outside uh, uh, look at you and say, there is a person uh, who believes that God is able, who believes that God uh, is capable of doing uh, miraculous things in and through me? Do we have as much faith as we profess to have? Or are we relying on something else? You know, I, I don't know about you, but I've tried a whole lot of things. And nothing has proven to be a more reliable, more consistent than my faith in God. You know, I've tried to rely uh, in my own abilities. I relied uh, uh, in my own uh, 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 ability to provide for myself, uh, to protect myself. I, I relied uh, uh, in government, in, in corporate America, and all these other things, uh, but none of them uh, seem to care for me like God does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is your faith? In this story, we have a woman who is really preparing for the worst. She's preparing for the worst, and uh, uh, the prophet comes to her and, and asks, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? You know, she's in this position because of debts. Well. Uh, I told you all, the group of us went through Financial Peace University, and we talked about how debt is such a, an issue for people in, in this day and age. 39% yeah. of all households can't handle a $1,000 emergency. Lord, have mercy. That means that we owe more money than we have on hand. Amen, somebody. Yeah. It means that we spend money, we, uh, we owe people uh, in ways in which we should not. We, we buy things uh, that we cannot afford, uh, and then uh, those people that we owe become our masters. And you know, Jesus said you cannot serve two masters because you'll hate one. Amen. But I was, if we were talking about in Bible study, you know that thing we do on Wednesdays? <laughs> We were reading the book of Romans.
compliment there. Something stuck out to us, Sister Troy. Paul, the Apostle Paul, was talking to the church at Rome, and, and he said something strange. He said, owe no one anything except love. He, Paul was saying, uh, we should not owe anyone anything except to love you. I, I don't owe you an explanation. I, I don't owe you any money. I don't owe you my firstborn uh, child. All I owe you is to love you. And I wonder how many of us really understand what that means. It means we ought not to be indebted to others uh, in any kind of way, be it financially or, or otherwise, but instead the only thing that we owe is love. And so this lady is in, is in trouble because of her debts and her creditors are, are beating down her door. Uh, if she was in 2018, her creditors will be calling her uh, a time after time after time after time trying to get what is owed to her. When you owe someone, when you uh, uh, owe someone money, they, they have control uh, of your relationship. And looking nowhere else and being able to go nowhere else, she goes to the man of God and says, they're about to take my children. And the prophet says, uh, ask her a question, what shall I do for you? And she answered, your servant has nothing in the house. Come, accept a jar of oil. Sometimes we live, uh, sometimes our outlook, our perspective is all about scarcity. Oh all God. we focus on is what we don't have uh, instead of uh, uh, realizing what it is that we do have. She said, I have nothing uh, in this house except a jar of oil. Uh, but the prophet says, uh, if you have just a little bit, then that's something that I can work with. When I was thinking, when I was thinking about this passage, I, I was like, a jar of oil. What, what would she do with a jar of oil? What is the purpose of a jar of oil? And, and my mind went to the, the story, the parable that Jesus told about the, the ten virgins. Uh, five were wise uh, and five were foolish. Uh, uh, and, and it said that when the, the bridegroom was delayed, uh, the five wise uh, still had a little oil uh, left over. Uh, and I feel like preaching right now. Uh, the five wise uh, had a little oil left over so that even though the bridegroom was delayed, uh, they still had oil so that they could light their lamps uh, and still keep watch. Uh, uh, and I, I stopped by to tell someone uh, that even though uh, this widow doesn't have much, uh, as long as she has a little oil uh, uh, left, uh, she still uh, has a way uh, uh, to survive. She still has something uh, that God can work with. I don't know who I'm talking to uh, this morning, uh, but you may think uh, you don't have much, uh, but you have just enough uh, for God to work with. Uh, if you avail yourselves to God, uh, then God can do uh, miraculous things uh, in and through your situation. She said, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. How many of us wish we had just a jar of oil? Amen, somebody. I, I never look at what God blesses me with uh, as insignificant. Uh, instead, I, Lord, I, I may only have a dollar, uh, but thank you uh, for this one dollar. Uh, I may not have uh, a five pennies, uh, but I'm going to bless you uh, and thank you uh, for these five pennies because it always could be worse. She says, not much, just one jar of oil. And he said, go outside and borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels and not just a few. I, I love this part of the story because it, it zooms out and, and helps us to recognize uh, that we're not in this all by ourselves. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had a witness this morning. Uh, uh, that's why God brings faith communities together. Uh, because uh, you may have a jar of oil, uh, and you may have a jar of oil, uh, and you may uh, have a jar of oil. But, but when God brings uh, all of these jars together, uh, then we change uh, communities. We transform the world. And the thirsty have water to drink, and that everybody has 
because God can do much with our little. That means that we're all in this together. Amen, somebody. When we all bring our, our contributions together, uh, God can do uh, great and marvelous uh, and miraculous things uh, when we uh, offer our gifts unto God. And that's what this woman was doing. Uh, she didn't know why uh, the prophet was telling her to go and get vessels uh, because she had a jar of oil uh, that contained all the oil that she had. Uh, hallelujah, somebody. Uh, she had uh, uh, all uh, that she possessed. Uh, but when the community came together, uh, uh, what was little uh, became much. Uh, and I don't know if you realize this, uh, but when Centennial comes together, uh, uh, we can do great uh, and miraculous things. For the kingdom of God. Last week, we, uh, Brother Jones, uh, uh, dressed in his uh, in his military uh, dress uniform, uh, uh, reminded us uh, of what we do when we come together uh, as a part of our food pantry. We uh, we feed uh, hundreds of families each week. Uh, none of us could do that on our own, uh, but when we come together, uh, the community is fed. Uh, hallelujah! Uh, uh, I, I just believe uh, that, that God had this in mind uh, when He brought us together uh, as a faith community. Not that one of us uh, would have to bear all the burden uh, alone, uh, but that when we come together, uh, when your little uh, uh, comes together with my little uh, and your little uh, comes together with my little, then, then we can spread all of our gifts, uh, all of our blessings uh, around uh, so that the world can be transformed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This story is about a widow. One who would not be able to take care of herself because of a loss of income from her husband. And you know that the scriptures have a particular care for the widows and the orphans. Now in our society, uh, 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 the widows and orphans uh, look a little different than they do did in the Bible. The widows uh, are, are those uh, who often are, are not uh, true widows, but are single mothers. Amen. Amen. And the or orphans sometimes are those who have uh, uh, parents, especially fathers, who are incarcerated. Uh, and I just believe in 2018 uh, that those are the people that, that the faith community, that the people of God uh, ought to be caring for. Uh, those are the people uh, that the community of faith ought, ought to be uh, crying out for uh, and praying for uh, and bringing our resources uh, and blessings together in order to help. When we bring, when we bring our little together, God can do some amazing things. I don't know about you, but I've seen God blessing in extraordinary ways with just a small offering. So it says, go out to all your neighbors. Let them know that this isn't just a you problem, but this is a us problem. Eh? Amen, somebody. You know, we, we have to realize that, that even the issues that we face, it's not always about us, but it's about the community. Amen. Uh, uh, we're, we're not just uh, 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 in, in isolation with, with our issues, but these same things touch everyone. So he says, go outside and borrow vessels from all your neighbors. Empty vessels and not just a few. Then go in and shut the door behind you and your children and start pouring into all these vessels. When each is full, set it aside. Uh, what the prophet was doing uh, was giving uh, this woman a plan uh, and uh, asking her to be obedient to the word of God. Uh, and I don't know if you realize this, but we in the church in 2018 uh, are obedient to everything uh, but the word uh, of God. Uh, uh, the word of God gives us instructions uh, on how to live uh, a life of faithfulness. Uh, but we said, uh, that's not what it's doing. Surely, that's not what the word could be talking about. In Malachi, it says, bring the full tithe. Mm -hmm. 
into the storehouse. But we don't believe that. But I'm just telling you that I've tried it and I've realized that God's economy works a whole lot better than my own economy. Amen. She received the instructions from the man of God uh, to bring the, the vessels and start pulling, pouring them in. Uh, and in verse 5 it says, so she left him and shut the door behind her and her children. They kept bringing vessels to her and she kept pouring up. And then in verse 6 it says, when the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he said to her, there are no more. The oil stopped flowing. What what happened? Uh, this seemingly endless uh, flow of oil suddenly came to an end. Yeah. What happened uh, uh, in this story? What happened uh, uh, in the life? What, what was taking place that caused this oil that was flowing in abundance all of a sudden to stop? Was it because was it because uh, was it because she had too much? Was it because uh, she was not grateful for what God had been doing for her? I don't know uh, what you believe or how you understand this story, but I believe uh, that the oil stopped flowing when God had sufficiently blessed her uh, for the moment. Uh, and I don't know who I'm talking to uh, this morning, uh, but God will abundantly uh, and sufficiently uh, bless each and every one of us uh, if we are, if we have faith, uh, if we are obedient, uh, if we are thankful uh, for the little bit that we have. Uh, God promises that we will always have enough. Uh, and, and I've told you uh, in the past uh, that, that I don't need it all uh, because I already have the one uh, who has it all. Uh, you don't need it all uh, because you have God uh, and with God uh, you have everything that you need. As she filled, she suddenly had, had enough to pay all of her debts. In verse 7 it says, She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your children can live on the rest. Go and sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your children can live on the rest. When I look at that, I look at God working it out. Yes, sir. Somebody said, won't God do it? Yes, yes God will. Yes, God will work it out so that all of your debts can be paid. Yes. And so that you and your children can live on the rest. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If I look at that in my New Testament mind, I, I see that God saved this a family. Yeah, Lord. God saved these children from slavery. The same way that Jesus saved all of us, children of God, from slavery to sin. I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but you can be free from your debts. You can be free from your sins. You can be free from all that holds you down because Jesus has paid the price. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We don't know anyone anything except to love them. We don't know anyone anything except to love them. And when I think about this story, I, I'm, real, I'm reminded of the fact that in the house, we already have everything that we need. Sometimes we just need to open our hearts and open our hands and recognize that God is up to something. We're not relying on what the past or, or we're not looking towards the future, but right now God is up to something. And, and I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of whatever God is up to. And so I promise 
to avail myself and my gifts and that which God has blessed me with so that, that I can be an insider of God's plan. Do you know giving puts you on the inside, amen? amen. It gives you uh, insight into what God is up to. And so uh, many of us received our cards in the mail this week asking for us to renew our commitments. And so I'm inviting you right now as we go to God in prayer to consider your commitment, to consider what God has already blessed you with, and to make a commitment to this ministry, to this faith community for the future, so that we can continue to reach out, stretch out, and touch the community in a variety of ways. Yes. Let us pray. God, we thank you for all that you continue to bless us with. Thank you, Lord. And we just ask that you touch us and help us to have generous hearts. Help us to discern what is your will for us in our lives. As we prepare for our future with you. Lord, let us not be concerned about what others may say or others may think. But speak directly to our hearts. And give us the boldness and confidence to trust you. This is a time of renewal and commitment. Lord, we've tried other ways and we acknowledge that your way is the way. Yes. 